we've been talking about retail, businesses are shutting up shop as customers worry about their spending. More empty shops are being seen. Even the big players like Smith & Coe and the Warehouse are facing closure and all big changes. So joining me now is Carolyn Young, Chief Executive of Retail New Zealand. Carolyn, uh, good evening. Thank you for being here. Kia ora. Kia ora. Um, can you tell us, is... Do you think it's a, is it a culmination of many factors that are seeing mm. businesses um, struggle? And if so, what are they? You're, you're absolutely right. There's a wide range of factors at play here. And, and you know, they range from, you know, increasing costs from things like freight and insurance and leases and, and you know, supplier costs, all of those sorts of costs just continuing to mount up and squeeze on margin. You've got increasing pressure on wages, um, you know, all of the inflationary factors. And then alongside that, you've got, you know, one of the lowest periods of consumer confidence that we've had in a very long time, and it's an extended mm. period of low confidence. So consumers aren't out there spending. And so, you know, retail and large is about um, disposable income and, and discretionary spend. But even in those non-discretionary areas like fuel and, and supermarkets, we're starting to see retrenchment in terms of sales on a year-on-year basis. So it's certainly a, a perfect storm, I think, that we're seeing right now. You've said that you've been hearing from some members um, having to close their businesses, sadly. Mm-hmm. Is it a, is it a mix of, of retailers, uh, Carolyn, or, or is it one or two struggling harder than others? I mentioned, because I mentioned hospitality um, before I spoke with you, and they seem to be doing okay. Is, is it... Is it, do you see, you know, one retailer in that business hurting more than, say, Hospo, or is it all across the board? Look, there are some retailers that are doing um, well, and there are a whole significant portion that aren't doing so well. Mm-hmm. And um, that be a range of factors. It can be about location, you know, some of the CBD areas, whether you're in Wellington or in Auckland, those CBDs have been hit quite tough with a range yeah. of... You know, um, policies that local government have got in place and roadworks and crime in the areas and, um, you know, great, not great um, environments in terms of um, some people, you know, around the streets with um, aggression and, and addiction and, and those sorts of things. Mm. So there's some issues around that. But then, you know, in rural New Zealand, there can be pockets where things are going quite well, depending on, you know, what that... Um, provincial area is based on in terms of their, um, you know, if if it's a rural area that's based around dairy and we're seeing low prices in the dairy space, then obviously that's going to be a bit more of a struggle. If you're just outside of the big cities and you're reliant on, you know, for example, outside of Wellington, if you're in the Wairarapa and you're relying on Wellington um, consumers to go over the hill and spend money, we know that they are seeing less money being spent in their stores because there's been big retrenchment across the government sector Mm. and the wider um, economic implications it has on other businesses are also associated with government in the Wellington region. So wide range of spaces, but businesses that I've been speaking to that are doing well certainly have a really great customer focus. Um, They're doing a lot of work on on their products and making sure that they can market um, you know, to their customers in a way in which mm. will encourage them to come in the store um, you know, and give them really great customer service when they're in the store and hopefully be able to convert that foot traffic to sale. But it is much harder to convert to sale and the dollar value that the sale is is much lower than it has been. So yeah. there's lots I- of challenging factors in there. I think I think a lot of businesses too, if they've if they've got in a community where, you know, they have a lot of loyalty, um, if they've been there a while, mm. they they mm. seem to be right. seem to be doing okay. I, I was talking about a, a favourite restaurant that we go to, and it's always busy. No matter, it's not just weekend; it's during the week. But they're they've been there a long time. They're very good with the customers. They make you feel like you know you're part of the family. Um, yeah, yeah. And 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 I'm, I mean, I don't know behind the scenes if if, if they are. I think they're doing well because they always seem very busy. So I suppose that's what businesses are now trying to focus on is that if they can that loyalty. You've you've said that, and and I know businesses can only pass on extra costs to customers for so mm. long um, before that's people right. just stop buying. Are we at that point? So, so what I was going to add to your comment just before, it's all about margin. So, you know, while you've got all of these increased prices coming through um, into your business, 
at what point you're able to pass them on to customers and at what point customers can withstand that. That's the critical factor, right? Because if you've got a whole lot of increased prices through, that's going to cut into your margin and your profitability. You're running your business at a loss because you're not passing those costs on. Then obviously that's no use either. So it is a real fine balancing act to make sure around, you know, what price point consumers can absorb and what prices the business absorbs. So it's a, um, a real niche uh, in order to get that right at, at the moment because we know that consumers are really taking stock to work out you know, what they will spend money on um, mm. and how much they'll spend. So they're you know, making really careful choices around the use of their disposable income.